Hello everyone, Larry Satchwell here. I'm just trying to fill a couple of voids in this piece of cherry. Jacob's birthday was this week. He turned three years old. He was born ten weeks premature. But he's catching up fast. His language is really coming along. And what he had stored up before he could talk, he was a late speaker. But uh, it's amazing how quickly he's catching up. So I'm going to make him a growth chart. Uh, both of his grandfathers are over six feet tall, so uh, maybe he'll be six feet. Uh, this board is a little short, actually. It's uh, five feet tall, but I mean, he's already, I don't know how tall he is right now, but he's got to be over two feet. <laughs> so I'm going to start this probably at 18 inches. I've just been filling a couple of voids here, and I just noticed another one. With my Starbond black uh, CA glue. CA glue is a uh, form of, I guess, probably a form of epoxy. I don't know. But anyway, this black fills it in. This piece of cherry is a terrible piece of cherry. But this was taken off of Jacob's great-great-grandfather's farm with the help of his uh, great-grandfather, supervising and the help of uh, Karen's brothers helping me. It was a dead standing cherry tree. I've had it a long time and I know you've heard me say this before. This might be the last piece, but I really I've been cleaning up a lot. This is the last longest piece I have. I may have a few scraps around, but this is really a terrible looking board on the back. It, it's got all this uh, uh, It looks like termite damage or ant damage of some kind. It's got a terrible thing right here that I'm going to have to fill in. But this is the back side. Uh, it's got all this uh, sap wood on it. But the front side is remarkably in good shape. So I, I put a little tight bond in there. Let it set up a little bit. And this is an accelerator. So you don't have to wait for it. There's tons of these boards on the internet, how to make them on YouTube. You can buy a template for 100 bucks if you're going to go into multiples. But neither one of these edges is clean enough to run on my new jointer. Uh, they're both off uh, live edge, and it would take multiple, multiple passes to get this to a straight edge. So I'm going to take it over to the table saw. This is half of my uh, Bora system for breaking down large pieces of plywood and I'll run this along the fence. I was hoping to hold it down with just one roll of tape but it's not working. Uh, evidently this has a little bit of a, a bow in it. So I'm going to use two sides. I don't want it there. I feel pretty good about that. I certainly don't want it coming off while I'm cutting it. So I'm going to take this over to the table saw, rip a straight edge here. Like I mentioned earlier, there are dozens of YouTube channels on how to make one of these boards, but I've only seen people use a router or a CNC. I don't envision myself ever having a CNC, and I would like to work a little more quietly. So I'm going to use a V-groove, and I'm going to carve this whole thing by hand. So I've got my tape rolled out here. I'm going to make the one-inch increments one inch, the quarter-inch increments one and a half, the half inch increments two, and this is the full three inch for the foot. So I've got my tape measure started here at 16 inches because I know he's already 16 inches tall. And I'm going to start with the one inch mark. 
and proceed. That's going to be pretty boring, so I don't think I'm going to bore you with it. I'll show you the end product. So everything is laid out. I uh, have my leather strop here. I've sharpened this not too long ago, so I'm just going to strop it here a few times. I'll keep it sharp. Well, that's the procedure. This may not be quite as accurate as the uh, CNC machine, but then I'm human. And I got this one a little crooked. So what, what I'm trying to do is to keep the pencil mark going right up the V here. And it will break off pretty cleanly. And I'll just try to get them as uniform as I can. I'm not going to stain this. I'm not going to color these in. I'm going to use polyurethane. And... I don't think I'm going to paint these. I may have to. But I think the polyurethane will darken. I'm not going to sand it inside here. So I think the polyurethane will catch this and make it a lot darker. After I want a clean corner here. So after I get all these cut out, I'll sand over the corner or use my block plane. This is not the best piece of wood. It's got some water damage down here. It's starting to rot right here. Uh, the backside... Um, looks horrible to be honest with you, but it's kind of rustic looking, and I think the added uh, hand carving here will keep that rustic look going. So I uh, printed out some numbers. Instead of carving them, I'm going to Use this uh, maple. So I've got them all cut out. Just need to clean them up a little bit. All right, that's what it's going to look like. Get the rest of them here. So the last thing I did yesterday was to glue the numbers on. back from Lowe's I got some polyurethane wow the water-based polyurethane is $25 now I've got the oil base I'm gonna brush this off real well well I've got a dry brush and I'm gonna do the back first I sanded this a little bit, but I didn't spend a lot of time back here. I stabilized these cracks, but I'm going to put this coat on. The, uh, this is where it really pops. 
and I think this is the best utilization of this board I could use. It is really soaking this up. I can put another coat on in about three hours, four hours, depending on the humidity in here, but it's pretty dry today. Could have done this outside, I suppose, but there's a lot of pollen in the air. Well, this is where it should really pop. I did not expect that to turn that black. 